Thank you very much for joining us again on TVC Breakfast. Well, the dust is yet to settle on what many have termed the controversial tax reform bill. Just last week, the National Economic Council recommended the withdrawal of the current tax reform bill from the National Assembly. This in order to pave way for more comprehensive consultation and consensus building among key stakeholders. This development comes after government, governors of 19 northern states of Nigeria expressed their disapproval of the bill on the basis that it was anti-North. The government, however, says the bill will be to the benefit of all states in the country, with President Dobu saying uh, that the, he's urging the NEC and governors from the North to allow due process to run its full uh, course. The tax reform bill uh, has four legislative proposals. That's the Nigeria tax bill, which aims to eliminate multiple taxation. Then the Nigeria tax administration bill. This is designed to harmonize tax processes across all levels of government. The third is the Nigeria Revenue Service Establishment Bill, which seeks to rename the Federal Inland Revenue Service to Nigeria Revenue Service. While the fourth is the Joint Revenue Board Establishment Bill, proposing the creation of a Joint Revenue Board to streamline tax administration. And together, the four bills are set to transform the nation's tax sector, making it more efficient and aligned with global best practices. Joining us via Zoom from the United States of America is convener, Social Rehabilitation Grace and Support <coughs> Initiative, Dr. Oludari Marindotsi. Thank you for joining us and uh, welcome to the program. It's good to see you. And uh, have you voted, by the way? Yes, you know, yeah, there's a lot, about 81 million people have voted in the United States. It's a very good, uh, exciting time. You know, the polls are closed, but we might see surprises. We are very, very excited. Yes, and, you know, we have Nigerian interest at heart, so definitely a lot of all my people that I know, we've all, you know, make sure that make sure we mobilize people to the polls. All right. I didn't get whether you voted. Did you say you voted? Uh, of, of course. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's come back home then. Uh, we will continue to uh, you know, monitor the process. Let's come back home to address uh, this issue uh, here in Nigeria. Talking about the tax reform uh, bill. So what do you make of it? There's so much outcry over it, but the president says that the process continues. Let the engagement continue uh, over there at the National Assembly. What do you think? Yeah, you know, the tax reform bill is, uh, to me, from the, you know, tidbits that we've been able to pick up on the internet and everything, looks like a very good, well-meaning, well-intentioned bill, but the bill also suffers from the same original scene of the President Tidubu administration, which has been communication. It's the, like a lot of the anxieties that we see from the Northern governors, from the, uh, you know, uh, National Executive Council and all, is because of the lack of paucity of communication. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I read the, uh, what's called the post by the tax reform, uh, the, uh, Mr. Taiwo Idele on X, whereby he acknowledged a lot of his concerns, like, okay, if you put this tax exempt and it's being sold somewhere else, are they not going to be the project? But those are things that these people, these northern governors have, uh, you know, valid points about. But in that place, it, it was not addressed. Those concerns were not addressed. And I, and I believe these people have been working for a long period of time, so they have these proposals for these things. And these proposals should have been you know, something that would be discussed. And also, I have been checking online for, you know, like the draft of the bill that was submitted to the National Assembly. The National Assembly does not have a, the National Assembly's website has not made it public. And the administration has also not given a detailed framework of what you know the bill entails, so that you know the average shoemaker, the person that is some people like you who are working in the corporate world, everybody knows how this bill is going to affect them, and then the national conversation can move in that direction. So the only problem that I see is definitely that the fact that the details, the devil is in the details, and the details are not yet there. But that the reaction to it or the solution to it will not be to withdraw it. That is like a knee-jerk reaction that 
will not solve any problems. We cannot say that we should retain a lot of our, I mean, I went to the FIRS website and downloaded all the tax codes. Some are from like 1979, maybe the latest were like, was like maybe 93 or something. I mean, I'm sure, I'm pretty sure if you were using the car, you wouldn't be using them download, especially when the system was either so broken. The one that is causing anxiety is definitely the VAT. And that VAT, there are points for and against. You can look at it like, a, the, like the one everybody talked about, like VAT on alcohol. Fano does not, you know, want people to consume alcohol within its boundaries. And I think also Jigawa and some other states. And, you know, and it is, you can understand, and you should also, I feel like we should respect them. If they don't want people to con consume alcohol, they also don't want alcohol taxes. Mm. Because it, that is that is the truth. It is it, it is Aram in Kano. The United States government government does not collect taxes on cocaine consumption because cocaine is considered illegal. So if alcohol is considered illegal, I'm pretty sure if you ask the governor of Kano, he will tell you don't give me money for alcohol taxes. So we need to respect them by exempting them from those taxes that they consider you know uh, uh, illegal or you know not. Are applicable to their way of life. You know, the, it was Amadou Bello that said that we have to recognize our differences, and it is in respecting those differences that we can build a more unified, uh, united nation. So we need to listen to that very old man. That, that man is right. We need to respect those things. But also, places like Lagos have real concerns in terms of the amount that they are able to generate based on their own activities. And we, but because this is not only going to affect the northern government, it's also going to affect places like you know Ndo State and no. So these uh, problems that we can look for from the right and to the left, these are things that the administration and the tax people should have addressed and let the people be carried along. So that is the problem that I see with this particular bill, precisely. All right. So now the president has called for withdrawal of the bill for to allow for wider consultations. Now, um, one, one issue that many people have um, had with taxation is the issue of uh, multiple taxes. How do you think this will address it? Because in, in a place like, uh, it might not just be Lagos, but in a place like Lagos, you have a consumption tax. You have several other taxes now that I'm trying to uh, remember off my head. Several other taxes apart from the regular tax you pay, which is statutory. How will this help in reducing tax, thereby helping small businesses to grow? Yeah, I, I, I believe like the tax bill and from the, you know, the little bit of the, in this past information that we have about it, they want to unify it and put everything under the Nigerian Revenue Service, including the taxes that are being collected at custom and all those things. Because you are very right, there's a lot of taxes, a lot of implicit taxes. And, you know, I know Tayo Oedele has spoken about this at various for over the last, you know, one year plus, that these multiple taxes need to be admitted. A, a, a woman selling fish has not even sold one fish. You have already collected like five different levies from her. Mm -hmm. And this is going to add, add to our cost of, you know, uh, production and what she's going to sell. And these are things that, you know, they have a very good uh, agenda in terms of the, the tax lim the limit from which taxes start to kick in. So, because a lot of people need to be exempted from the from the tax bracket, and even when you look at like the like say public transport, it may be exempted. Uh, maybe if you want to use Uber and all those things, it, but all these drivers pay multiple little little taxes on the streets too, of which they still pay tax whenever they buy petrol. So all these things need to be harmonized. But the way by which they want to do it, those uh, information has not been put, you know, forward for people to see because the draft bill. Is not available anywhere for people to scrutinize and peruse and you know extract information from. And when the governors and the uh, stakeholders raise concerns, the uh, tax people have not been able to provide details. They want to continue consultation. I believe that they have information, so I feel that information needs to come to the fore much earlier. The administration cannot afford to be consistently reactive to situations like this, they need to be proactive with information dissemination because this would lead to a lot of bad blood. People might think uh, they are trying to use it to marginalize the North, whereas even states like Ondo State, which is almost next to Lagos, is going to be affected too. Ogun State also will be affected. Every other, every state in Nigeria will essentially be affected. But we need to improve the way we are collecting taxes. If you think about it, if you give 
your car to your mechanic and you pay your mechanic for service. You are supposed to pay a service, a VAT on that service that the mechanic has, 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 you know, has rendered to you. So how do you want to use this? Technology will definitely be good and everything, but these are ways for the government to improve its revenue. But the problem still remains the fact that the ways by, the ways by which they want to harmonize this thing are still not uh, very, they definitely they've eliminated a lot of levies which we have to give them credit for. But that bill is not visible for people to review and scrutinize. So the administration is not even trying to shape public opinion ahead of when uh, you know people will start attacking it and neighbor, nature abhors a vacuum. So if you don't get proactive, stand in front of the bill and start pushing your own ideas, the people who are against it might mislead people. And this should, these are things that we might pay, you know, political or uh, what was it called uh, penalties for in the future. And this bill, I feel, is well intentioned because this is one of the uh, what's called uh, moves that the president did earlier on in the administration that I was so happy about because the taxation in Nigeria, even including bribe that you pay policemen on the road when you are moving your goods from one point to, to, to another point, those are part of things that need to be to be removed. You are you still have all these radio taxes, television how, taxes, how, how do you, and all these how things. How do you remove that, that kind of tax? How do you remove that kind of tax? This. How do you remove that kind of tax when it's not? Hello? That, how do you remove that kind of tax when it's not? In the law, when it's not statutory, these are monies you just give out, right? And how do you ensure that in, in places like Lagos now, um, they call them agbaros, don't collect money from bus drivers or from public um, uh, vehicles and all of that? And you know, when that happens, it still trickles down to the, the customers. How do we ensure that these taxes, um, informal taxes, are not being paid such that at least? The, 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 the Nigerians will be able to enjoy what they are working for. Yes, you are very right. It is like in Nigeria, you pay taxes for survival just because you want to breathe air, because you walk out before you do anything. I try to set up a business in Lagos. I also suffer from agbiru and multiple people coming to you know, ups, uh, uh, you know collect money from you even after you have not paid. But it's not just the agbiru that is doing it. Even government in in Ondo State, my mother has a school that she uses her own personal income to pay to teach her school fees. And at the end of this year, she was still made to pay about five hundred thousand naira in taxes. Where where I asked, where did that money come from? It's still coming from me. So because she's trying to set up a school to educate Nigerians, she's not getting grants and money from government. She's having to pay money to government. So the, the way they, the way they can do it is to ensure that this. The VAT, uh, in, uh, what we call derivative uh, uh, system, if they can get the buy-in of the local government and the state government, so that they, because they are the ones that enable these so-called act bureaus and not to go out and make all this money. So if they get them to have a buy-in and to have bigger route of making money for the local government, mm -hmm. so that they can stop this unnecessary uh, illegal taxation, and also when an attempt is made, being made to collect it you can definitely ensure you punish people. The, the ones that we cannot account for, like the bribe that you have to pay policemen to move, they can also stop it. You, you can have people that will act like they are moving something and watch if policemen will collect bribe from them and you know prosecute them and get them convicted <clears throat> and do it on a regular basis so that police know that people are on their trail so that they can stop collecting bribe. At least we saw what happened with the policeman that was trying to collect uh, bribe from the Dutch uh, Traveler. Those things need to be happening on a more frequent basis, whereby you will be reducing all these things. But the most important thing is for the states mm -hmm. to feel to feel that like this thing benefiting them, and then they will buy into it. There's also, and I really sympathize with the not, even though you will say that yeah, we cannot continue the adult wealth nursing of northern uh, states, but we can also sympathize with them because they have insecurity and they don't control their security forces or agencies. So if you want them to improve their tax generation so that the 60 percent uh, within the within their uh, borders uh, generate uh, amount will come up, they need to be able to secure their environment. So this all the all these things need to happen and in and so that you give the governors more leeway, maybe more uh, what you call avenue to explore explore and exploit all the mineral resources that they have so that they can improve economic activities and also this would be an incentive for not governors all across the country especially in the north 
to invest in human capital development, to invest in education, to understand that education is more than just building, uh, putting buildings up. There was a governor that went to build a fire station and there was never a truck or even water in the place. You, can, you cannot say you have fixed education because you built 20 classrooms. You have to train teachers. But guess what? When you train teachers, you cannot take a picture and use it for campaign in the next cycle, which is one of the most uh, major reasons why you will see the decadence in the level of our education over over uh, you know decades, even before I was born, because the government is not re reinvesting in all these very salient things. So there are more that need to be done about this reform aside tax bill. The right. northern governors also need to be given ability to exploit their resources. To you know, secure their environments right. and then get them in the, in the board and let them know if they give up this thing, this is what they are going to get back in terms of right. federal government investment. Dr. Mario Doctor, let me just quickly ask how you, how you <coughs> see this going, how you think this will pan out, especially as the president has uh, refused to withdraw the bills, uh, as you know, despite the calls on him to do so by the uh, uh, the, the neck, so to speak. Do you think that these governors will wield that much influence to frustrate uh, the bills, even despite uh, the assurances by the president that um, there should be wide consultation and engagement uh, before, as this bill, these bills are tabled before the National Assembly? You know, uh, we, we, I think it was Nicola, I think we all, people on, people on opposite side pray to the same God, but they don't. They don't get the, the uh, everything they want. I don't believe the president will get everything he wants, but I believe he's a skilled, uh, you know, politician. He has been able to pass a lot of things. Uh, uh, I feel like he, I feel like it will go through. But the problem is not the fact that this bill will go through. It is how it goes through. How you do it in such a way that you don't pass the bill today, which is also one thing that Nigerian government has been guilty of for generations. Whereby you pass a bill today. And then tomorrow, you want it to come into effect without giving people the time they need to go through their growing pains and adjust to it and invest in this technology and everything that you need. I believe they even have to pass it. It should not come into effect until maybe two years so that the organizer and the mechanic will know that they now have to start collecting taxes for the services they own. Niger they do, they, they render. Nigeria is one place, I always say this, that Nigeria is a place whereby a person will work for you and then beg you to give him money. He will not ask you to pay me for my services because we technically don't believe in payment for services. That is why you see a lot of all these mechanics will probably inflate the price of tire because if they tell you pay me 50,000 for my services, you'll be like, what? Even me as a doctor, they didn't want to, someone did not want to pay me 1,000 Naira for consultation in Nigeria. So how do I charge VAT on the service that I, that I have rendered? Maybe there's, there's no VAT on service of doctors. I'm just using that and these things as an example. So we need to ensure that we can make people not have to go through a shock therapy. Let them know that, yes, we are passing this bill. After we have read it out and we've passed it, then we will now work on implementation over a period of time, as opposed to just the way they do it when they want to ban Okada. We said, whereby where they ban Okada today, and Okada must be out of the road tomorrow. You give people time to, to readjust. You let them know if you have if you have, if you have, a, if you have a shortfall in your revenue, the federal government will step in to supply your needs, and then you too have to come up with your revenue. So that would, that might mean that the federal government will start investing less in places like Lagos and Portacos because they have a lot of revenue, and the federal government will be investing more in places like maybe uh, Maiduguri or Sokoto or any of these, or maybe a Kitty State or maybe Abia because they are not having enough revenue from VAT. But Lagos is making a lot, a lot of revenue. So these are things that we checks and balances, things that they can weigh and have this conversation. But I believe that the tax team have considered a lot of these things, but they are being sparse on details. Nature has all the vacuum. If you want to do something as seismic as this, you must, in this generation especially, the information, the information is, you must be seen over talking for people to even understand you. So, I saw the post by the tax uh, chairman. It was, yes, he acknowledged the problems, but he didn't provide any feasible solution. He just said he wants to have consultation. You are the expert. If you come to meet a doctor, your doctor will want to give you your, the medications you need. But yes, you have a voice. So you are, you are, as you are consulting with the doctor, the doctor is also consulting with you. Are you allergic to this drug? Okay, you are not allergic. Take it. 
So you need to come up with your own prescription. That is uh, Mr. Tai Oyelele. He needs to come up with his own prescription for this problem. And then the consultation between the stakeholders can now be, okay, Kano, can you take this prescription? Jigawa, can you take this prescription? Let's find out we can find the balance for it. Because Lagos and Port Harcourt have even gone to court either to over something like this. They have a valid claim. And the essence of politics is conflict resolution by dialogue and, you know, by and political dexterity. So I feel like they need to keep on going on this on this route, but they need to communicate more, just like they need to communicate more with every other policy that has been good so far. So in, in, in all of this now, um, you are not in Nigeria at the, point, at the moment, you're in the United States now. My question will be, how will... Um, how does Nigeria's tax reform bill compare to international best practices? Yeah, so uh, according to the U.S., uh, the U.S. tax system is different from what Nigeria is trying to do. In the U.S., the, gov the federal government does not really collect VAT. They leave that to the states. The state and the local governments charge the VAT. And every time, every anything you buy, except maybe food and some few items that are tax exempt, uh, exempt you don't pay taxes on those ones. But as you go and pay your mechanic, you buy groceries, check, everything that you are looking at right now, the government collected taxes on, and it is collected on the, what's it called, on the, at the point of sale. Not, so once, once collected at the point of sale, then you that you are selling, you have a duty to remit. And the United States is very, very strict. And there's one thing that I need to actually talk about, that we don't talk about, because, you know, the Minister of Finance talked about agro businesses and everything. What about entertainment? Nigeria is big on entertainment. Bonner Boy boasted that he made over two, 100 million in 2022. If, he, if that 100 million is, is his, uh, was his income, he should have paid maybe around 35% or whatever the income tax is. There's, there's a possibility that he has been paying taxes, though. I, I'm not saying he has because been that, paying I, 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 I want to doubt if they don't pay taxes, but there's a possibility that they, everyone they, is not paying they taxes. They pay, they pay, but it is all those, it, it is all those things, including they, they, all of them, all of them pay. But are they paying the effective percentage that they are supposed to pay? Are they when they when you when you when you get Bonner Boy service, is a Nigerian, all is streaming. Do they have a way of streamlining all those money? If you want to promote something on social media and you want to play an influencer, do you there a way that the federal government knows that if the influencer is charging you five hundred thousand naira for promotion, then you are going to collect the uh, VAT on that one? Those are things that they need to also look at in this new generation. Because the way by which we do business has changed. I'm not saying Bonner Boy, the video, all of them will be paying taxes, but are they paying the exact percentage that they are supposed to pay? <laughs> These are things that That's they need to do. Into. Because the income, the income is not just going to come from the ones that we we know. Even this new influencer, social media influencer uh, pages are not. Everybody, all social media influencers in the United States, whether whichever website you are making your money for, from, they know that those companies, Facebook, everything, they give them their 1099 at the end of the year. They have to go and report that money to the gov to the government. So 1099 is a tax document, right? So if you pay uh, whiskey money, you give him 1099, you have to report it to the United States government and pay tax on that one at the end of the year. So these are things that they need to also talk about because that economy is a new for the government to make significant amount of funds. I heard you say it just before we started this conversation, that Nigeria is ranked fifth in uh, internet uh, social media usage all over the world. Yes. And we are likely number, number nine in population, and we don't even have a lot of money. So for you to know that that is an avenue for significant you know, revenue generation. And I mean, I don't know, I know some people who are in the social media and uh, the uh, entertainment industry. I don't think the government is approaching taxing them in that way. I don't even think that they pay any significant effect in taxes. Right. Well, all right. So these are things that we need to look at. Too. Right. And um, I, I recall that one or two celebrities, you know, in the past this year have gone on to cry on social media about uh, what they call the exorbitant taxes that they have had, to, they have incurred uh, from the Lagos State government, uh, especially. Well, it, that's that point. We might also need to check that point about uh, over or sufficient, uh, you know, taxation on the part of government. But uh, seeing, seeing as you are there, you know, in, in the U.S., and here in Nigeria, we could say that um, the issue of number of states, we have 
quite a number of states here in Nigeria. There are also many states in America. Help us understand, um, you know, walk us through, you know, the fears that these state governors are having. How this perfect tax system will ensure regional autonomy, because I, I, I guess that is also part of the grouse of, of the state governors here, here in Nigeria. What sense are you getting uh, in, in that direction? Yeah, if you, if you look at it in the United States, we have some states don't even have state taxes like Texas and Florida. Some have state taxes, so after the federal government has collected money from your income, <clears throat> the state will collect some. But in, in, the, in, the, in the U.S., the most important thing about it is the fact that states control majority of their resources within their, especially if it is found on state land. So from those resources, they make their money, and the federal government then supports their budgets. So there are states that are making enough money, maybe like Kentucky, Wyoming, and stuff, whereby the federal government sub, uh, supports more than what they make in form for in income taxes from those states. And, those, and that is the that's the prescription that the Nigerian federal government can also use to kind of balance the fear of governors who live in states. So states like Texas right now, whatever project that federal government is doing every year is not up to the amount of taxes that they are collecting. They are collecting more taxes from Texas because of all the oil companies and all the money that is in these states compared to the, more, the what they are investing. So that will make a place like Texas, California, New York, Florida, a donor state. And then places like Kentucky and all those other poorer states, they are going to be recipient states because the federal government is spending more on them than the federal government is making from them. So that is the prescription that, you know, we can use to allay the fears of all these governors because there are some states in Nigeria that we, I mean, in Nigeria, we know when the military created the states, they were the ones that created all the states. When they created the states, they did it for political patronage, quote unquote. Not all states are economically viable. Mm. So there are going to be states that will not be able to survive, that are not even surviving correctly, let alone when they now change this formula. And the federal government will have to keep on supporting their budgets. But that should not stop those states from allowing the states who can who have the capacity from growing at their pace. And I feel like resource control should also be something that should be coming into the conversation in this uh, field, in terms of how we let state government uh, governments be able to exploit what they have beneath their feet to improve their economy and then ensure that they keep investing in their people. One of the reasons why the Southwest and people like Lagos might seem better prepared to survive this shock mm. is the fact that there has been sustained investment in human capital right. development in the Southwest. All right, Dr. Oludare Marindoti, uh, we are now at the top of the hour. That's our cue to uh, rest our conversation uh, on this subject. We thank you very much, Dr. Marindoti, for your time with us. Thank you. And have me. a Bye. very happy voting experience today. Thank you. Right. All right, you're watching TVC.